Hi guys, welcome to today's video. What are we tackling today? Um, I'll let these comments just, just fill you guys in. That color is not it. It takes away from the beautiful door. No, the color killed it. The color choice is interesting. Me waiting for the new video with the repeat. I hope you changed the color. Oh no, 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 not blue. Becky, what are you doing? Can I repaint the wall, please? Okay, so what are we gonna do about it? If you guys remember when I made over my kitchen, I used lime wash paint for a part of it and I found it really difficult to actually source lime wash paint here in Toronto, Canada. I don't know if that's everywhere, but I had a hard time finding it. Turns out you can actually DIY it from scratch. And in that video, I asked if anyone would be interested in actually learning how to DIY it. And the overwhelming response was, yeah, tell us how to do it. So I figured today it could actually be really fun to figure out together how the heck you even make lime wash paint. And after we've made a batch, redo the wall with it. <laughs> I hope this is the right choice. So I've already done a lot of preliminary research on line wash. Turns out it's a little more complicated than I thought, but we'll get into the nitty gritty of it all tomorrow. But right now we have to tackle getting the wall ready for line wash. My fact, hold on, I gotta make sure I say this fact correctly. So as you would have seen, this wall has been painted with regular wall paint and lime wash actually needs to go onto something porous like brick or limestone or plaster, which this wall paint isn't. Regular wall paint just sits on top, but lime wash needs to soak into something. So we need a better base than what's already on the wall or else I don't think it's gonna adhere properly. So what I'm gonna use for that is a mineral-based acrylic primer. All of the uh, research online says that this is the best to put on the walls before lime wash if you don't have an already porous wall, like a brick wall. I mean, that's ideal, we don't have that. So I'm gonna go with this first as my primer, and I think this will set us up to have a good surface for lime wash. So I guess we're finally at that point. We're covering the blue with white. <laughs> it feels, it really doesn't feel like that long ago that we did this, so it's like, it like hurts my soul a little, but I think this is the best move. So let's get to priming. Yes, I will take them home. <laughs> oh. A quality build by yours truly. <laughs> Yay! Danny, straight to jail. <laughs> it's an old TikTok sound. Straight to jail. On both of them? I don't know. Strange. <laughs> so if you don't care at all about the science behind how lime wash paint is made and how it works, then you can skip ahead to this time code here where we'll actually start doing some stuff. But I do encourage you to stay because I find there's like not a lot of times that actual old fashioned science interacts with the things that I'm really passionate about. This is one of those times. So I think this could be a cool learning moment for both of us. Okay, so lime wash is made basically from limestone, which is just a rock that's made mostly of calcium carbonate. This limestone rock is the very first form of lime wash. I'm so proud of myself. I, I know things. If we heat and crush up the limestone, we are left with a product called quick lime or just simply called lime. The heating process removes the carbon dioxide from it, leaving just calcium oxide. You could say that this is now the evolved form of limestone. Super fun fact, I'm gonna interject. I found out in my research that solid bars of this quick lime were heated in old theatrical plays to make a really bright light, which is what we call limelight. Now we're gonna evolve this guy one more time. So if we add water to our quick lime, this is a process called slaking, which essentially hydrates the quick lime. This process releases a lot of heat while it's happening, which I happen to think just looks super cool. <laughs> right? This process is converting all of the oxides of calcium and magnesium into hydroxides because we are hydrating them, hydro, with the oxides together. It makes a hydroxide. 
falling. All right, once that process is done, we are now left with the limestone's final Evo. The guys told me I'd be cool if I said that. <laughs> We're left with hydrated lime, or also known as slaked lime. This is still a powdery product, even though we did use water to make it, and this powder is what we're gonna use to make our lime wash paint. We're here, full circle. We're ready to make paint. As you can see, all that really goes into making this lime wash paint essentially is the limestone rock, which makes this a really great alternative for traditional wall paint because it's quite eco. It's non-toxic and contains zero VOCs, which are the harmful chemicals you might find in traditional wall paint. Other benefit is that it's also super cost effective. We bought a huge bag of hydrated lime, which was that final form of lime, and it cost about $13. And with that, we can make a ton of lime wash paint. All right, so we know how it's made and why in theory it's a really great option, but let's see how easy it is to actually make it and get it up on our wall. But before we get into that, I wanna just take a quick second to tell you about today's sponsor, which is Neil and Oat. As you guys can probably tell, it did take a little bit of research to figure out all of that science stuff we talked about earlier, and it's not something that comes naturally to me, so I really needed a place to put all of these thoughts and different things together, and that's why Neil and Oat was the perfect tool for today's video. Not only did I have a ton of recipes and like information to gather, there was also so many like inspo photos to consider, I'm still not even sure what color I'm gonna do that wall. So luckily I was able to throw together all of the different options we were talking about. And within this board, I can go back to see what the current wall looks like still. And that is helping me inform some decisions. Basically there's so much stuff that I had to gather to make this video happen. I needed Milano. Note. It was a true hero today. It's also a really great way for the whole team to be on the same page about what's happening for this project. We can all make lists, add to them separately, all look at the same list, make notes and comment on those lists and photos. It's like the perfect collaborative tool for our whole team to use. They also released a brand new sketching feature where you can draw directly on your board and then the team can comment, like I said earlier, on said drawings. I think my favorite feature of Milano is how easy it is to drag and drop pictures and inspo photos into one place. I'm such a visual learner that I just need to see everything picture-wise on there, along with texts and, and lists and everything. Like you can even do anything that you want on Milano. It's so good. Also, none of it's like snapping to a grid. It's all free form. You can put stuff wherever you want, which for a creative brain, sometimes you know that's what you need. So if you couldn't tell, I honestly recommend giving Meal and Oat a try. For your next creative project, you can actually sign up for free using the link below. Guarantee you guys will not regret it. So thank you so much to Meal and Oat for sponsoring this part of the video. I think we should now get into actually making some paint. The two recipes I'm gonna be trying out are made from one, a base of hydrated lime powder, which we talked about earlier, and two, a base of lime putty. So lime putty is just simply the lime powder pre-mixed with some water to make a putty-like texture. This putty mix I've already pre-made and it's chilling in this bucket. It's important to note that lime can irritate your skin, so make sure to wear protective gear when mixing up your paint. To apply the paint, I'm using this extra wide stain brush linked below. The other ingredients you'll need are natural earth pigments. I'm gonna be testing out a couple of different colors. Alum salt, this helps the pigment bond with the lime, and some water. Okay, so for each color, I'm gonna do a hydrated lime mix and a lime putty mix to see which one I like better. I'll be giving you guys the exact recipe later on in the video once I've decided what the move is, but for now, I'm just doing a bunch of testing and mixing. Yeah, I can hear it, it's like pop rocks. <laughs> Is that having pop rocks? Is it alum salt? Is that why it smells like candy? Everything's coming together. <laughs> For science, you must put some on your tongue. In the name of science. In the name of science. <laughs> that bulk barn, it must mean it's edible, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna do test patches of all our colors on this big sample board we had made. So I'm gonna do all my lime powder mixes on this side and all my lime putty mixes on this side. Again, still not sure if this is gonna make a difference at all, but that's what this whole testing process is for. So I'm gonna start with just the light beige color. I think I'm gonna like this one. It's a nice color. It's definitely not white. It's definitely very beige. 
Test patch one done. I think I probably want to do more than one coat of each color just so it's like a clear taste of what it will be when there's multiple layers on because right now I can definitely still see the white underneath this. But let's try the putty mix. I have a feeling this is going to look very similar. <laughs> it looks the same. There's that meme from the office and it's like, corporate is asking you to find the difference between these two photos. And she's like, they're the same. <laughs> they are the same, right? So it's definitely like more gray in the bowl than it looked in the powder. So we will find out. Oh no, my bowl is too tiny. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> hmm, it's quite streaky. Strange, what does it mean? I don't know, let's try the other one. I don't know what this means. Yeah, this one came out much more gray and that one's more brownie. Again, what does this mean for us? <laughs> okay, last color. This consistency actually looks the best like in the, in the jar. I think I like that. Okay, so the putty definitely makes it like thicker and the color stronger. That came out the best consistency wise. Interesting. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna apply a second layer to each test patch and then we'll reconvene tomorrow to decide on a color. Okay, today is finally the big day. We are gonna officially paint this wall its final color. So I pulled the whole team on our sample swatches of what color everyone liked. And honestly, to my surprise, the general consensus was the middle like beigey taupey color. I thought people were gonna be strongly team cream or strongly team dark gray, but everyone was in the middle. So I'm here for it. So I think now is finally the time to make our giant batch based on the recipes that we tried the other day. So I decided to go with the lime putty base mix because the results were slightly better and I already had a big batch made. If you didn't want to pre-make the lime putty, you could still definitely use the hydrated lime powder and your results should be pretty similar. My recipe is gonna be broken down into parts. The part can be as little or as big as you want depending on how much lime wash you need to make as long as the ratios are consistent. In our recipe, one part is going to be half of this small mason jar. In my bowl, I'm adding 10 parts of the lime putty, 40 parts water, one part alum salt. I actually pre-diluted this salt into some hot water so that the salt was able to mix better and didn't cause the recipe to come out gritty, which sort of happened in my test patches. And one part pigment. I'm using a whisk to stir it all up really well. P.S. Don't worry if you're not writing all of this down. We got you. All of the recipes and ingredients are up right now on our blog for you to check out after. Okay. Very uh, excited to see this. Okay, another important thing is that the lime wash separates pretty quickly, so you wanna have your whisk with you at all times so you can keep stirring it. We also don't need much either, like you'll need to get that much painty because we're using the tip of the brush to do most of the work. Oh, she watery. Don't be alarmed at how watery this first coat is. That's the idea. This is very important. I'll let voice over me explain the science behind why this matters. So lime wash needs to be applied in three different coats, the primer, the wash, and the patina coat. The first and last coat being a very diluted version of your main wash mix. So lime wash drying and lime wash curing are actually two very different things. Lime wash needs a lot of water to cure properly and without it, your final product can end up being very powdery. That's why we're starting and ending our wall with a very watery layer to help everything cure properly. Here is the mix for that middle wash layer we talked about earlier. It's essentially the same recipe we made for the primer layer, except this time we're only using 20 parts of water instead of 40. So as you can see, it's much thicker than our first batch. The technique with applying lime wash is to paint it in a crosshatch X type pattern to really make the texture pop. It's definitely drying darker with each coat, which I knew, but overall, I think I do want the whole thing to be a little bit darker. So I am gonna take some of the darker pigment that I do have, mix it into my lime wash batch, and do my last coat before the final patina coat. Also, I spilt lime wash all over my pants 
and my shoes, hoping it comes out. That's the way she goes, but TLDR, it's looking really good. Lime wash dries up to 60% lighter than the color it originally goes onto the wall as, so if you're finding it's drying too light, you can always add in more pigment as you go. Okay, all my layers of the wash coat are on. I think I did about three or four different layers to build up all the color and I'm really liking how it's looking so far. So that means we're now ready to do the final coat, which is the patina coat. And for this, we're going back to our first batch recipe, which is the very water diluted version to seal everything up and make it beautiful. I also went in and added some darker gray pigment to our first diluted batch to apply as the final patina coat to try and cancel some of the warmer pink tones that were showing through. This did work, although now the wall is maybe leaning a little more gray than the initial beige we were going for earlier. Curious to see what Kelsey thinks and to hear what you think. Let me know below. Okay, the tape has been peeled off. The muntins have been put back on. The wall is pretty much done and conveniently Kelsey is actually just coming into the office like any minute now. I guess we might as well get her reaction again. This is all feeling very familiar. I feel like it was not that long ago I was revealing the first iteration of this wall, but I like this one even better, so I'm very curious to see what she thinks. Oh. Wait, okay, I was definitely expecting it to be more beige based on the samples that you were doing, but I really love how this looks with the, the kitchen cabinets. I think it blends so well with like the floor. I think it just, it fits the space so much better than the blue. The blue is a little too strong. I think the lime wash looks beautiful. How did it go? Was it easy? <laughs> like yes and no. It was a lot of like trial and error. The first couple, the first layers were really light. Then I made it a little darker and it looked like kind of pink. Oh my gosh. So then we tinted it dark, more gray. So now it's like a little more gray than I thought it would be, but I like it. I think it works really well with the style of the doors. It does, yeah. Just it's much better than the blue. <laughs> it's much better. You guys better think so too, because I'm not crying on the floor for another video. <laughs> Cry? What you say? Okay guys, I love how this wall turned out. I think it's awesome. Lime wash definitely is a messy process. It's an unpredictable process, but if you're down for a really unique looking wall that is definitely not gonna look like anyone else's wall because the outcome is so unique to the way you put it on, this is totally the project for you. It's eco-friendly, it's affordable. It's cool looking, what else can I say? I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something today. This is definitely an educational one for me. So I had a lot of fun doing this. If you like this kind of content, make sure you subscribe to our channel. I don't know what these fingers were, they're a bit creepy, but <laughs> subscribe if you like this content. And don't go anywhere because I'm gonna give you a quick sneak peek of what's coming next week, right here. There's so many unknowns to this room, guys. I like, I'm slowly piecing it together. I don't know what I'm doing. The vision is sort of there. I don't know, let's figure it out. We're not that well made. I made them, I'll admit it. <laughs> I cannot wait to address the lighting in this room. It's coming, because this is just something. <laughs>